Hello, it's been about three weeks, hasn't it? I didn't mean it to be this long. I missed you guys, but um, I don't know. You know what it's like after Christmas, January comes and you just think, ah, oh, just gonna wallow in the afterglow of Christmas. Just catch my breath a bit. So how was Christmas for you guys? It was lovely here. We, ha we had a lovely, lovely Christmas. I have to say though, I was very depleted afterwards. I think because we'd gone on holiday, sorry about that, I've, I've got a coffee. It's lovely, and um, but I've been gulping it. I don't know why, I just felt nervous about starting this uh, podcast thing. And uh, I think I'm having a spell mentally at the moment. And uh, I've been gulping it, so I needed to cut out a burp. Not a, not a belch, you understand, just a little <laughs> burp. Uh, yes, what was I saying? Christmas then. We, we did have a really great time, but having been away before Christmas for just over a week, and then we were home for a few days before everybody arrived, I say everybody, only Granny Popper and Auntie Claire arrived for Christmas, but it was, um, it was just, holidays for me is, it's lovely, I really enjoy them because it's just, there's nothing to not enjoy, but it also does mean that I'm cooking for a family of seven and tidying up and doing the laundry, and just, it's not that far removed from my normal life, which I love. Obviously, I, I absolutely love my life. But it doesn't, but it's not the same as going to a hotel, having all your meals cooked for you, your, your bathroom's cleaned and your bed made for you, is it? It's, it's just not the same. It's not the same kind of rest. And then we had Christmas, and because it's here, and also, everybody had been poorly at one time or another. Everyone had been feeling really ghastly, except for me. And um, you've probably seen all of this in my in my vlogmas, actually. So for some of you that watch the vlogs too, this is a bit of repetition. But not everybody watches vlogs. Some people watch just the podcast and some people watch just the vlogs. So this is just, I'm just mopping up. And I keep distracting myself. Honestly, I've always been scatty, but <laughs> I've taken it to another level lately. So after Christmas, I was I was just I was ready for a bit of um, put my feet up and uh, eat leftovers, eat from the freezer, and just revel in the afterglow. Except I caught a virus, so I ended up in bed for three days with a temperature and aches and shivers and just feeling ghastly. <laughs> and I'm not very good at being poorly, I'm very impatient. But this time Toby looked after me handsomely. He was absolutely brilliant, I cannot fault him. It has taken him 19 years to get his head around what I need when I'm infrequently poorly. And he should be a really good nursemaid because if ever I get a hangover, he's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But when I'm properly poorly, I don't know, I think he panics. <laughs> it's because he loves me so much. He thinks, what will I do if I lose her? <laughs> yeah, he just, he just replaced me. <laughs> so, before Christmas, I had all these lovely plans of what we were going to get done, what I wanted to do, all of the crafting that I wanted to do, and I hardly did any of them. I did some of them, like the gingerbread house, and that was, I think, a triumph. I was very pleased with that. And I've got some footage somewhere of it getting completely mullered by Ted on his birthday, as is the tradition. So I will put that in now. And if there's any other bits of video pertaining to that day, I'll put them in. In fact, I've got quite a few bits of um, footage that I took over Christmas in the Betwixtmas period that I'll um, I'll put in. I'll just slip it in here and there. Uh, my friend Nick, Nicholas, he was our local vicar. 
Don't know what Margot's gobbing off at. Here comes Bunny. Fishy. Don't come and be a nuisance. I had to pause. Bunny just needed my attention. And I'm getting a bit hot sat here. It, I was really cold and now I'm a, a far too hot. So I was saying that if there's any footage, I'll I'll pop that in now of the gingerbread cake house um, and anything else that went on over Christmas. I don't think I've got very much. So there's probably going to be about three minutes of it. If that's not your jam, skip forward. Happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> now you can blow I your did, candles I did, out. I did the other way round. You're, you're 15, not 51. <laughs> 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 I wasn't even filming it. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I want to put it back together again. I think it's a bit far flat. Oh, cut, look, it's everywhere. Everything goes on the floor, you've got to pick up the bunny on. Cool. I'm breathing on all the all the all the icing sugar. Oh, blimey! Oh, seventy five. Yeah. Yeah. She's seventy five. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. She is. Go on then. Well done. You know what? Thank you. Welcome back. Actually, I've realised I haven't introduced myself and some of you won't have a clue who I am. I'm Gaynor and I live in southwest of England in a lovely county called Somerset with my husband and my three boys and my two rescue dogs, my three rescue chickens. Well, they're not rescue as in I haven't rescued them. I've, I'm looking after them for my friend indefinitely. Basically, they're mine. <laughs> and two hamsters. Yes, you heard me right. We had two hamsters originally. Lucy died in the autumn. I was devastated. We got a new hamster, coconut. And honestly, he's rubbish. <laughs> he's a really rubbish hamster. He is coming round, he's getting better. He's still not confident, he's very timid, scared. Um, he's unsure of Bill. I'm putting in the time with him, so he's getting much, much better with me. And uh, we have some very nice little snuggles once a day. But he's not, he's not like our other two. Little Timmy, who we've still got, is, he's stepped up. He's kind of filled in the gap that Lucy left. He, he comes when he's called. He's just, oh, he's amazing. Such a great hammy. So I didn't manage to do my Christmas puzzle. I started it, but hardly spent any time on it. I actually just didn't have the time to spend on it. In fact, over Christmas, I think I knitted about three rows on my knitting in a whole week. And you can always tell how how much or how little time I get to sort of sit down and zone out by um, what my screen time is, because predominantly my screen time is um, watching vlogs and podcasts on YouTube. And it was down to eight minutes a day. <laughs> so, yeah, I had eight minutes a day <laughs> to myself. <laughs> Um, I didn't do the, I did do the orange peels. I wanted to do the candied orange peels. I did do them. They didn't work out that great. They were quite bitter. I made far too many. My mum wanted some, but I forgot to send her home with them. I dipped them in chocolate. Um, yeah, so they're just sat there. So I'll try again next year. I didn't do the Krankasaka cake, you know, the ringed, thing cake I didn't do that I didn't make the honesty wreath I've got notes down here that's what I'm looking at 
We didn't decorate the tree whilst watching Polar Express and having Prosecco because my boys were gits and they didn't want to. So I decorated it by myself in a mood. <laughs> we didn't watch Polar Express at all. Um, I didn't watch the last four episodes of Strictly the Saturday night ones because I was busy and there was stuff going on or we were away. So that fell by the wayside. And I didn't do the folded and dipped German stars. If you fold them, you make these 3D stars out of um, strips of paper and then you dunk them in wax. Didn't manage to get them done. Started, my friend Naomi who looked after the house when we were skiing, we tried doing it together and uh, didn't quite have the right paper so it was a fail but um, we did start we did have a go but I never finished that um, I'm, ju I'm just trying to mop up everything here comes bunny I might have to pause again I'm just trying to mop up everything kind of you know like at the end of a novel tie up the loose ends a lot of you asked what were we laughing at on the 24th of December, Christmas Eve, when we were all in the drawing room and <laughs> Toby was reading something out and everybody was just hysterically laughing. I, I was trying to quietly laugh, otherwise you wouldn't have heard anything because I was closest to the microphone. I can't share it here. It's rude. <laughs> but if Bordy humour, kind of bawdy English humour, um, is your thing, then Google Amazon Veet hair removal review. And there's a really long one on there and it is very, very funny. What do you want? You want to go out, don't you, for W-A-L-K. I'm going to take you in a minute. I just want to talk to my YouTube chums. Yeah. Go on then, off you go. No, not on my lap. Off you go. No, go on. Go on. I've written on my notes, massage gun. And I can't remember why I wrote that. Why would I have written that on there, massage gun? Now Bunny's wobbling the camera. I actually think that, because I do my notes in my phone, I've just transferred them to my iPad here. So I'm recording on my phone. I keep thinking about upgrading to a camera, but I'm not very good with technology, but it would be nice to have the ability to do more. Um, I must have just written massage gun as a reminder on the wrong list because I must have been thinking I was writing that on my things to pack for skiing because granny who came out with us she has got a really sore hip and Toby's got a sore shoulder and a sore ankle so the massage gun which was a gift um it wasn't a sponsorship and I wasn't giving it to advertise I was giving it to I was given it by this company whose name I can't remember. They just wanted me to talk about it once. I did it on one of my lives, if you want to see. <laughs> it was quite a stupid live. I think I got my words muddled loads in that one. And um, and the deal was to talk about it, good or bad, or even don't talk about it. They just wanted to send me this gun. I, I, I mean, I did think at the time, what is the catch? Anyway, this massage gun is incredible. It is so good now I don't really get offered very many sponsorships I get given a lot of gifts from my friends um my yarny friends um which I share on here but it's never I'm only sharing it because it was a gift the fact that they have a shop is kind of separate to that they haven't sent it to me to promote for them they don't expect me to talk about these things in a timely fashion. And anyway, this massage gun thing was absolutely brilliant. And yeah, I don't, I don't get offered very many 
collaborations, I suppose you, I suppose you call them. Um, if I did get offered collaborations, I would be, I would continue to be as picky. I have get, I've been offered a few things, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't want really this to be a shopping channel. But if I'm offered something and I really, really want it, like Ali's got from Little Drops of Wonderful, she got a brilliant crafting light the other day that she's um, been raving about and not just on her podcast because we chat and she says it is really good. But I don't know how you, how you, how you get offered these things. Do you reach out to them? Do they reach out to you? I don't know. I don't know how it works, but anyway, I've gone off right off on a tangent, haven't I? Mmm. It's gone cold, but it's still delicious. So I was wearing my jumper and I got a bit hot. You can't see, but the fire is still going. I was wearing my soiree, which you've seen before. I've done a whole vloggy podcast on it. I'll link it below if you're interested in having a look at what I had to say about this because I love this jumper. I wear it loads and it's turned out extremely well for me. But that's not to say it wasn't challenging. The pattern, honestly, was a pain in the bum. Pain in the bum. I wouldn't recommend it to a new knitter. If you've knitted a couple of jumpers before, or you've got somebody on speed dial who can help you, then go for it. But otherwise, oh, look, I've got a hole in there. Mind you, this blouse is 100 years old. Oh, but it is so pretty. Look at it. Look at it. I've done a load of repairs on it already, but isn't it lovely? But yeah, it's going there now. Oh dear, that's actually a massive hole. I'll have to do some of that um, patching and darning stuff. Oh, I love this blouse so much. Got it on eBay about eight years ago. I get most of my stuff on eBay or secondhand. I love it. I love things that have had a life before. Going back to Christmas then, we decided as a family that we, we decided a while ago that we've all got enough stuff we've all got too much stuff granny and papa are trying to um downsize and to have to cut out the inevitable stress that christmas shopping can bring we don't do gifts anymore and i've been cutting back across the board on gifts that i buy for people and interestingly and also gifts that I receive, I, I put a plea out there. I really do not need any gifts. <laughs> I had another offer the other day from a lovely viewer saying that they wanted to send me something, but please, please understand. Your comments, that funny noise is the dog lying on being bag, scratching her ear. Your comments and the fact that you even spend time here watching my channel is all the gift that I need. I honestly, honestly don't need any more gifts. I, I, um, I've learnt, having looked into the love languages, that gift receiving is my lowest love language. It's my least thing that I care about. I don't love to receive a gift. I prefer words of affirmation. So I like a lot, a lot of praise. I need a lot of praise. And I like acts of service. So I love it when somebody makes me a cup of tea or um, does my washing up, empties the dishwasher, does the ironing just does a school run for me, brings me food, <laughs> that sort of thing. I absolutely love acts of service and words of affirmation. They are my thing, totally my thing. There's also another love language, which is physical touch, gifts. There's, a, there's a, another one, what is it? Quality time. 
quality time. So that's another funny one for me because quality time for me at present, because my entire life is, apart from during the day when people are out of the house, but my mind is consumed with acts of service for the people who are out of my house. The quality time for me is all about just being by myself and being quiet and not having any distractions and not having an ear cocked for somebody who needs me. Yeah, so why have I gone down this tangent? Oh, I was talking about gifts. We didn't give gifts. And it's been so lovely. I haven't faced January looking at a mountain of gifts and thinking, where do I put it all? Where do I put it all? Because <laughs> I've got so much stuff. I'm nearly 47 years old and I am a bit of a hoarder. So I just, I have got more than enough. More than enough. So it was so lovely to not have, I feel, the stress. I'm not to not have the stress of trying to find locations for gifts. I will get onto the knitting in a second. Uh, yeah, I'll get onto the knitting now. And then afterwards, I'll chat about um, my revenue changes and two books, okay? Right, so first off, I'll show you this. I've only got two knitty things that I've got here to show you. And that is a giant, not giant yet, but soon to be giant. Some of you might be surprised at this because this is really, really, this is not my taste. This is not my cup of tea at all. In fact, I think this looks like a stew, it looks like a soup. And it's all bright colours. But somehow, I think it works and I absolutely love it. This is, um, it's all the minis from the Lay Family Yarn Retreat that I went on in, bye, in November. Had such such a wonderful time as always and I did not know what on earth I was going to do with these minis as I touched upon before I've got too much of everything I specifically have too much yarn and when you go on these retreats it's wonderful because you get to dye your own skein of yarn there's mine Marjorie of the trash heap that's that colorway I think it's lovely it's my stool I'm sitting on been creaking creepy stool, creaky stool. Um, but you end up with a handful of mini skeins, one of each colourway that your fellow retreaters have dyed up, which is just a really lovely thing to have. It's really lovely to have as a memento of your time away. So I decided as much as scrappy isn't really my thing, and a lot of the colourways weren't really my thing. I thought I am going to make a shawl outfit. Now, it's done something to my brain, this has. It's definitely done something to my brain because the colourways that I wasn't drawn to are the ones I love the best in this shawl. So the colours that were not my jam are the ones that make this shawl for me sing. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And also, although this is completely scrappy and there's some truly bright colours in there, because I've just done little bits, little bits, little bits, I haven't done the thing where you start and you keep going until you've ran out. So you have one great big triangle of the same colour and then you get ever decreasing slashes as the rows get longer of um, of mini skeins because I've just deliberately done it you can see well I don't know what happened here that was an accident um, they look very different in the dark I do this in the evening so they just look very different oh there's an airplane going over hold on 
yeah they look very different in the evening but as you can see here I've I think I got to this point here and I had 30 ends to weave in because I'd just done a little bit here a little bit here a little bit there all the different colors because I didn't want that triangle block at the top I wanted it all to be uniform all the way all the way down as much as possible so this is the size that it's got to so a good good size with just the minis that I had from two retreats that's nice nice size oh I don't like that now I'm seeing that ah oh, that is too far back for me to unravel oh I didn't think about that what a shame never mind never mind let's not be too fussy about it um yeah so I've been on two two retreats where you got the mini skeins so they've all gone into here and then I put out on the whatsapp group to um everybody if anyone's got any leftovers from their minis would you mind donating them to the cause so Chris is sending me some there in the post now thank you Chris and um, Chris from the first retreat, different Chris, she sent me a load. Thank you. I don't think she watches podcasts actually. And um, Bex from Bex Creates, she, I saw her on Tuesday, her and Claire from Bird Street Yarn. Um, I met up with them. Oh, I've forgotten to bring in my basket of podcasting things i've got loads of stuff to talk to you about this is going to be a long one guys buckle up um i met them on tuesday we went to a shop called like so amazing which is a fabric shop to choose some fabrics for me to make bex's baby she's pregnant at the moment um for when for when the to, yeah, to make the baby some bits for when he's born and then we went to a lovely cafe called Bristol Loaf. I'll pop a picture in of us. And I'll show you in a second the fabrics that I bought. Um, and I think I've gone off on a tangent and I'm not gonna complete what I started talking about. Yeah, Bex gave me her leftover little minis um, on Tuesday. So that shawl is going to be massive and in my mind I see it as my running out to the chickens when it's cold shawl just wrap myself up in that and leg it or something to put around my shoulders if I'm knitting in bed and it's chilly or just to wear <laughs> obviously I don't need to give it a title of when I will wear this scrappy shawl Oh, I'm still doing all right. I'll just quickly show you the progress on my jumper that I'm knitting out of Debbie Bliss Fine Donegal Tweed. Um, I won't go into too much detail now because I, my last podcast proper, I went into quite a lot of detail there. So I will link that below as well in the drop down box. And, and while you're down there checking out the drop down box, if you wouldn't mind taking split second and clicking like and maybe throw an emoji or a kiss or something in the comments that would really help me it would really really help my channel and it would really help my channel if you did pop back and look at one of my previous podcasts that I will have linked below because um that tells YouTube that you're enjoying what I'm putting out and then YouTube will suggest my channel to other people like you. So if you like me and you want to, and you think other people might like me, then it'd be really helpful if you would do helpful to my channel. And I would just, I would just absolutely love that and appreciate it. Because I do want, I want, I do this channel because I love it, but also, I would like it to do well. I would I would really like my channel to be something that feels like I've worked hard on it and 
my reward is seeing my numbers growing. I would really love that. I feel very uncomfortable saying it. Back to the jumper, back to the knitting. Oh my gracious, it looks amazing. <laughs> that looks so good. Ah, oh, you see in real life, that's not as crisp or as flat. It definitely is in need of some serious blockage, blocking. Um, but on screen, it looks absolutely perfect. I am really enjoying it. So I've done one sleeve to completion and I've got hardly anything. Oh, it's that coffee. Sorry. Do excuse me. Come on, no one's going to subscribe now. This belching bird from Bristol. I've only got that much left on that sleeve and then a bit of the body. I don't think I'll get everything out of this ball of yarn but I do have an additional one here ready to go so that's that now I'm just going to go and get the bits that I wanted to chat about in my from my basket from the other room oh I'm collecting all my ends from this scrappy shawl because one of my um, fellow YouTubers, the Fibre Wolf Co, um, and Tess Knitters, she does test knitting for Amy, Taylor S Studio, who I have test knitted for on a few occasions now. I test knitted her Clandon sweater, her Whitmore sweater, her Fordingbridge socks, her, what were the gloves called? The mittens some mittens yeah anyway maria fiber wolf co she knits those incredible little frogs i'm gonna put a picture in here so you can see and she stuffs them with lots of ends and other stuffings and things so i was talking to her the other day and i said i will save my ends for you to stuff your frogs so that's what i'm doing um she's her grandmother's about to turn 100 she's desperately trying to get together the money to go to Norway she lives in Portugal she's desperately trying to get the money together to go to Norway so um she's fundraising for that if if you wonder what that's all about if you pop over and look at her channel um yeah go and get my basket now Can you hear that dog? I'm sure you can. So I've got a basket of bits that I want to chat about, plus a paper bag. I've got a feeling <coughs> I had to cut some coughing out. Still got a little bit of a lingering thing. Um, I have a feeling that we're up to about half an hour of viewing time now. So if I were you, <laughs> so that you don't get sick of me, I'd um, come back another day and watch the rest if you so wish or pause, go for a wee and make a cup of tea. Okay, let's just start at the top of this pile of bits. So this is the fabric that Bex has chosen. It's bunny flapping her ears. Bex has chosen for me to make something for her little baby boy. I was going to make this little romper suit that I've made twice before, but I couldn't find the pattern. I don't know what I've done with it. I've got a feeling when I did my um, massive clear out a few, oh, must be nearly a year ago now, I think I might have chucked it out, the pattern, because it was a bugger to make. So I, I'm in the market for some really joyful making joy to make patterns for a baby things like maybe some harem pants or a romper suit or onesie nothing with fiddly fiddly clasps and doings I can do buttonholes and I have got some poppers popper making thingy but I don't want to be doing rollo loops and ties and stuff like that 
So there, there's that. It's lovely mustardy cotton fabric. Oh, he'll look cute. He's going to be born in June. And then this jersey, nice and stretchy. Um, not, not sort of fleece lined or thick, but t-shirt fabric. I've got a meter of both of these. Um, yeah, so patterns for, it's not lovely, patterns for um, baby. Easy to put on, easy to iron, because I think you might need to run an iron over that. Just easy, easy to sew, joyful sewing, baby patterns. If you know of any, I'd be really, really grateful if you could let me in on that. So I got that fabric from a shop in Bristol called Like So Amazing. And I also got these labels by Kylie and the Machine. Now, Kelly said that she's going to be stocking these soon in her shop. I talk like you all know who I mean when I say Kelly. It's because she's my friend. I assume everyone knows who I'm on about. This is the back. Oh, I'm not going to get it to focus because my phone just doesn't do that. Which is brilliant because I have to put little ties in the oh I haven't done it in this jumper because it's easy to see with this jumper because of the decreases on the neck which way is the back and which way is the front but I usually put a little contrasting strand of yarn tied in the back so I know I know which is the back um so I got those for that and then I got these for those times when you when you make something and it's challenging and you want the person to know Made with love and swear words. Yes, yeah, so Kelly um, Lay Family Yarn, that's who I'm on about. <laughs> She's going to be stocking Kylie and the Machine labels. They're absolutely brilliant. I love them. Did anybody watch <laughs> Kelly's podcast yesterday? <laughs> Lay Family Yarn. Google that and you'll find it. She just has me in stitches. One minute she's showing us her, um, she's doing a, she's knitting a vest, a slipover, and she loves it so much she's going like this. And then she's like, oh, stop rubbing your boobs on YouTube, Kelly. And she's been caressing her boobs. And then the next minute she says, right, I'm going to go now because I need a wee. Bye. <laughs> she just cracks me up. Probably makes me giggle. What have I got in here? This is a little bag my mum made me out of a pillowcase that was her grandmother's. So my great grandmother's. And inside, well, that's good. It all ties up nicely. So when I met up with Bex on Tuesday, Bex of the one that's having a baby, um, Claire was there as well. Bex and Claire are sisters. And Claire is of Bird Street Yarn. And uh, those two were on the retreat with me this November. And I've knitted some socks out of Bird Street yarn. Yarn. <laughs> this is called I Am The Gingerbread Man. This is actually a mini that I got from Kelly, Lay Family Yarn, but I can't remember the colour because it came with a sock set and I stole it out of that sock set. Here we go. <coughs> I have a feeling I've made these slightly too big. Keep doing that. I need to stop. But I really, really love them. I think I've been making these since before the pandemic. I think I got these, this yarn in from Flock, which is their Southwest meetup. I think I got it in November 2019 or something. I did an eye of partridge heel, but I don't know if I'm doing it correctly because my eye of partridge heels never show up quite as decoratively as other people seem to I do it you know how you slip one knit one slip one knit one and but with an eye of partridge you offset your slips instead of them all being going up the same row so is there something else I should be doing am I meant to be twisting them or knitting through the back loop or something I don't know but I'm glad to have shown you these because I want to wear them 
I want to put them on my feet. And I've got 40 grams of it left over, so I'm going to make another pair. I love this. I love this yarn. And what I think I'm going to try to do now is before I go and crack into yet another fresh skein of yarn, is use up the leftovers of things till they're gone and then go stash diving. And I'm not buying any more yarn in a hurry. And I don't need to because I've been given more yarn. Right. So let me just say, when I was waffling on about I don't want gifts, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm about to contradict myself, okay? Because, and when I say, oh, gifts are not my love language, it really does depend who they come from. Now, I have an incredible friend, Catherine, from Bed of Roses, and we, we chat very soulfully i know that sounds stupid but we are like you know when you have pen friend in the olden days and you'd spill your hearts out to one another we're like that we have become over the past i don't know how long we've been chatting for now three four years we have become like soulmate pen friends <laughs> and of course Aside from lovely words, which you know is my love language, words of affirmation is just so high up there. I, I really thrive on positive comments, which is why probably I love this YouTube channel so much because I get so much love and support from you guys and your comments and, and I just, honestly, I need them especially when I'm going through a spell, like I am. I think I'm not very well in the head at the moment. <laughs> things things are feeling a bit peculiar up here. Anyway, uh, let's just talk yarn, or you're not going to see the colours. So Catherine is a stockist for Chelsea, Chelsea Lux, Chelsea Yarns. Oh, this is just so heavenly and I wanted to show you because I just um, I don't know if I would knit that in it's a bit of a wild card for me but what could I knit with this it's 400 yards of sock yarn and then these are 20 gram minis so I've basically got 140 yards of um Beautiful yarn. What am I going to do with it? Oh, beautiful. It came wrapped up with this gorgeous little thing. And look, more stitch markers. Oh, little snow globe with stars in. So cute. Got a G on there for Gloria. <laughs> for Gaina. A pearl with a star. Oh, lovely. Oh, I can use these now. I've shown you. She doesn't send me stuff to show you guys. She sends it to me as showing her her love and because she's got an amazing shop. She just and she loves everything her shop in her shop. She just likes to share with her friends. Oh, they are so beautiful. Oh, I've got another stitch marker in here that I wanted to tell you about i've been sitting on this for ages not actually sitting on it rosedale of rydale no sorry rosebud of rydale she sent me this that is the um motif emblem for autism my eldest son is autistic so she sent me that so lovely so can you see if you wanted to get one 
It's Rosebud of Rydale at hotmail.co.uk. I don't know if she's got a an Etsy shop just yet. But that's worth checking out. <coughs> okay, we're on, we are on the home straight. After I knitted Bill some socks out of DK and I talked about it, I um I was saying about how well, I don't know what I was saying. I think I was saying about um, DK socks just knit up so quickly. And a lovely girl called Nikki Knits, N-I-K-K-I-E, sent me her pattern for these um, northern socks or slippers. And they look absolutely delicious. So they're sitting in my queue. I'm just looking to see if there's another path, another picture. No. But I just wanted to share those because I know a lot of people are in the market for DK socks. So I'll pop that in the below box below. Um, I do feel like I'm rushing now because I need to take the dog out and I need to get Margot to the groomers. I need to go to the supermarket and then I need to pack because I'm going away this weekend on my own completely and entirely, which I've never done before. If I've been away without my family, I've been away with friends. And then, of course, you're having a wonderful time and I love that. But you are when you're away with somebody else, you're considerate of what they want to get out of their weekend away as well, aren't you? Whereas this weekend, I'm going away by myself. So all I have to be considerate about is what I want to do. I'm so looking forward to it. I really am. So I'm going to go to the supermarket and make sure that the family's got everything that they need for the weekend. Because unlike blokes who throw a toothbrush and a pair of pants in a bag and then wave over their shoulders, they shoot off for the weekend. It's not the same for mummies, is it? And nor would I want it to be the same because if my family didn't need me, if I didn't have a role at home, then what the hell would I have? They are my world. They are my absolute world. And I am so grateful and fortunate that that is the case. The only thing that's making me not want to go away tomorrow is that my middle son, Teddy, is at a farming school and he, because it's so far away, he has to stay there. So I don't see him from Monday morning till Friday evening and this time I'm not going to see him till Sunday evening and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Okay, look at this. This is what happens when you give some walnuts from your tree, the fleshy bits on the outside, to a local yarn dyer who does things environmentally and ethically soundly. She it's hand dyed with plants in harmony with the earth. Bunny, stop licking your leg. You're making a really yucky noise. This is a 100% merino from sheep grazing in Kent. It's so soft. The colour is caramel. And I think it's walnuts, the dyes from the walnuts from my tree mixed with a bit of madder. I have no clue what this will be. But it will be something. There we go. It's by Alice from Wool Matters. I gave her a few years ago, I was dividing up my rhubarb and I gave her my rhubarb root and she made some incredible dye colouring. Dye colouring? From that. Dye colouring? Colourant? What's the word? And um, I've got a skein of that lurking as well and that's on a natural sock base. Honestly, I have so much stuff. I know I keep saying it and yet here I am. Got some more, but this is because it was dyed from my walnuts. I couldn't not have some, could I? I love it. <clears throat> right, quickly gonna say about two books that I've read. 
One of them is called Brits Marie Was Here and it was a very surprising book, not what I expected at all. I don't really want to give much away because I want you guys, if you choose to read it or I listen to it and it was very well read on Audible, I want you to discover it for yourselves. I want it, I don't want to give anything away because I want Brit Marie's character to unfold and her story and what she gets up to and how she interacts with other people and the difference she makes in other people's lives and then the difference that they make in her life. It's just a really heartwarming, heartwarming story. Slightly crazy in places. I mean, she has a full-blown conversation with a rat three times, I think, three or four times in the book. Yeah, she anthropomorph... What's it called? Anthropomorphizes? What is it called when you put human characteristics on onto an animal and throw something she does that it's a very entertaining book and I really enjoyed it and then a book that I read with Wilfred I may have mentioned this before because a lot of you recommended when Hitler stole pink rabbit which we are now listening to together on school runs the book that we listened to last time was called the war that saved my life and I think for Wilf, this was a very valuable book to read because it touched upon the hardships of um, wartime Britain, the hardships that a disabled child can go through with an abusive family. I know that sounds really, really heavy for a child to, to heavy topics for a child, an 11, 12 year old to take on board. But the way it was written was written in a very accessible way and made Wilfred really think about other people, feelings um, and dwell upon how fortunate he is. It was also entertaining. There was enough excitement in a childlike way to hold Wilf's interest. It's just a really valuable book for Wilf to have been exposed to at the age and in his utterly privileged life. So I recommend that. I actually would recommend, I would recommend the Audible version because it was extremely well read and the characters and the voices that the narrator did, she, she did really well. It was not annoying in the least. It was very well um, acted, I suppose you could call it. My only criticism about the book is it's either been written for an American audience or it was written by an American. So although it was, not, not that that's a problem, <laughs> Listen to where I'm going with this. So although it was set in the UK, in Britain, war-torn Britain, wartime Britain, it had a lot of Americanized language in there. So garbage rather than rubbish, stoop rather than step. Um, they didn't write a letter to, they, they, it, it, the phrase was, I will write your mum instead of I will write to your mother, um, trying to think of other things, just, it was just lang differences in language. And it, it wouldn't have been that difficult to have um, stuck with the British theme and to have used the, the British colloquial language. But that's just an absolutely minor thing and it really, <clears throat> It really didn't affect our enjoyment at all. And if anything, it helped Wilf engage more because kids these days just, well, I remember being like it myself. We thought the American lifestyle and the American accent was just so cool. And it was only when I was an air hostess for Virgin Atlantic that I realised that American people, I mean, I'm going back 20, 25 years now, maybe it's changed, but American people thought that think that the British are really cool. <laughs> so it's grass is greener situation, isn't it? <clears throat> so finally, I wanted to touch upon uh, the adverts and the revenue here on this YouTube channel. 
I have been giving every single penny to Bill's old special school. As many of you know, we did a massive fundraising um, stint when we managed to buy a minibus and yeah, so many people helped me with that. So many people. I just owe a debt of gratitude to dozens and dozens of people for, for helping me raise the money. And all of my proceeds from this U channel, YouTube channel, oh, that was an alarm to remind me to chase up Bill's dentist, um, has always gone directly into the school bank account. Now, the situation with school has changed and they just don't need the kind of support that they've been receiving. Um, I don't really understand all the paperwork ins and outs, but it, yeah, it's just that they just don't need that level of support anymore. So I am, I'm looking for a different, I'll be doing something different with, with the revenue, but it won't, the whole sum won't be going directly to Bill's school anymore. It does mean that I'm going to have to sort out my accounts and do tax returns and change all of that and what have you. And I'm prepared to do that, that's fine. Because by doing that, it will enable me to not only continue to help Bill's school, but on a regular basis. So some months the school would get £3.68 and some months they would get £200 plus, depending on how active my channel had been. So I'll that will enable me to be able to be a bit more consistent in how I help them, which will help them in return because of their paperwork. I think it's to do with funds and funding applications and stuff. And I don't really understand. Well, if when I do, when I get my head around it, when I've had a chat with with the school, I'll um, if it's interesting or anyone's interested, I'll elaborate a bit more. So that so that's that. So I'm busily going through my YouTube description saying that up until the 30th of April 2023, all revenue from this video went to Bill's old special school. So that's that's a bit of a change. But I'm still supporting the school. I don't, I don't want you thinking that I'm just tearing that away. In fact, what I'm doing is I'm trying to make it more simple for the school to access more money. <laughs> it's really difficult, isn't it? Talking about something when you haven't got all the information, you haven't got the full details. And also you've got to be a little bit careful about what you say, because some of the stuff that the school shares with me is confidential. And I obviously don't know who watches my YouTube channel. And on that note, I'm going to go and walk the dog now. I will see you very soon because I will be vlogging from the Shepherd's Hut where I'm going to stay this weekend. I am very much looking forward to it. But I've also bigged it up so much in my head, I'm now simultaneously excited and dreading it. <laughs> so silly. I already miss my family and yet I just crave being solo. For I'm not even going to be gone 48 hours. It's less than 48 hours. Oh. I just kind of sense that you guys kind of get what I'm saying regardless of how clumsy I am when I say things, I feel like you guys, especially you guys who've been here for years, kind of really know me. Which is very reassuring actually, because something weird happened over Christmas with uh, one of the YouTube viewers who I thought we'd developed a friendship relationship and um, I realise now that the friendship relationship wasn't as important to them as it was to me. 
and we're now no longer in touch. So I suppose that is just the perils of having online friendships with people is that they're easy come easy go aren't they but not for me I find it I find it hard <laughs> it's really put me off making new friends online <laughs> thank you everybody for watching I hope you've had a nice time here with me and um yeah if you if you wouldn't mind clicking that like subscribing if you haven't already um, and leaving me a kiss in the comments box or tell me if I've been annoying whatever you like <laughs> okay see you soon bye bye